Hello there everyone, it is Mitsu here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we will have an in-depth analysis of Rodrigo de Paul. Before we begin, I would like to thank Econo Coaches Academy for sponsoring this video. Econo is the best way in order to improve your football knowledge and tactical sense. With 18 years of experience, Econo have worked with the likes of Paris Saint-Germain, Carlos Puyol, Jordi Alba and Christian Pulisic. After signing up, you will be getting new weekly content in the form of videos and much more. On the screen right now, you can view a sample of these videos. They offer two types of memberships. Make sure to enter the code MITSUJR to get your first 15 days for free plus 50% discount on your first 3 months of the membership. The link will be in the description down below. I would like to let you know that the first 5 people to sign up using the code MITSUJR once this video is released will get 70%, yes 70% off on their first month. So just hurry up, use the link in the description and sign up quickly to make sure you do not miss out on this amazing offer. Whenever the opposition is not pressing him, you will notice how he gives himself a lot of time on the ball, and more importantly, he always raises his head with the ball in his feet, to look for the best passing option and improve his accuracy. Whenever he is positioned deep in such scenarios, he goes for these switches. He completed 130 switches of the play, he also completed over 73% of his passes and delivered 339 long passes this season. On the screen right now you can see his assist against Brazil. He took his full time on the ball, allowed Di Maria to perform his run and deliver the ball to secure the only goal in that game. The ball tries to be as close as possible to the ball and provides a lot of passing options under pressure. He always tries to get involved in the attack in one way or another. The ball is the type of player that owns possession a lot more compared to any other player on the pitch. He is the type of player that would force the opposition towards pressing him and then release the ball quickly and move again into space to ask for the ball. Obviously, he is good with the ball in his feet. He completed 112 dribbles last season with a 67% success rate. Holding on to the ball also allows his team to complete these transitions more efficiently. He always takes his full time on the ball and makes sure he looks around and duplicate the concepts of scanning the pitch, but this time while he has the ball. So against Brazil, De Paul was asked to mark Neymar closely. Let's have a look on what makes him a great marker. The brilliance of performing all the man-to-man -man marking roles is to be able to apply this concept without affecting your team or in other words, without loudly saying hey, this player is only marking Neymar, he will not be having any other defensive responsibilities whatsoever. No, that was not the case for Depot. A lot of managers stopped using the man-to-man -man marking concept as it kind of forces one player to be out of their defensive system, as this player is responsible to follow one opposition around the pitch. But as you can see, De Paul was always around Neymar while still performing all the defensive responsibilities that any midfielder would have. Notice how the opposition was performing an overlap and there was about to be a 1v2 situation. So De Paul provides the heads up and quickly asks his teammate to mark the second player as they are now in a 2v2 situation. Same thing here, Brazil trying to outnumber the opposition on the wing. But De Paul recognizes the situation and quickly provides the midfield support to block the 1v2 chance on the side. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see, he is this type of active player who constantly talks to his teammates and guides them on who to mark and stuff, while still making sure no one passes the ball to Neymar whenever he is between the lines. Basically, De Paul was always blocking the passing lanes to Neymar whenever he was positioned between the midfield and defensive lines. On the other hand, whenever Neymar dropped down to get the ball, Rodrigo De Paul would be positioned really close behind him, waiting for the chance to press him. Overall, he was always annoying Neymar and not letting him get his time on the ball. I believe this is a really important trait for any midfielder. The ability to balance between having such an instruction of marking not any player but Neymar and still maintaining the other defensive responsibilities and being active on the pitch in general. I mean, he wouldn't be blamed if he finished the match and did nothing but mock Neymar. In fact, he would get the applause for doing that. But these little details are what differentiate players in such a high level. His positional awareness stands out thanks to his continuous scanning of the pitch. As you guys know, this is really important as a midfielder. Even if he doesn't receive the ball at the end, he tries to collect as much information as possible. This helps him identify the spaces behind him, as you can see in these examples. It also allows him to keep the ball under pressure. You might notice that he is always around, like he is providing a lot of passing options and he concentrates on winning a lot of the second balls in the midfield, which gives his side a huge advantage in any given match. As we mentioned earlier, his ball control abilities are top class. That's why he can play in a lot of positions in the midfield, either as a defensive, attacking or a box-to-box. -box. This is what also helps him in holding onto the ball and keeping it with him for a lot more time compared to his teammates. As you can see in these examples, he goes for a lot of link-up plays and short passes to get out with the ball under pressure. Quick passing and quick movement to provide passing options between the opposition's players. This also leads to a lot of fouls being called for him. He drew a total of 125 fouls last season. He begins a lot of high pressure actions for his side. He doesn't fully commit as you can see in these examples. He concentrates on blocking the passing lanes while forcing the opposition backwards. So his team can then complete the high pressure and mark the other players. He is really good when pressing from the back, or just being out of the play in general and then suddenly coming in and intercepting the ball right away. The way he reads the play allows him to be 1 or 2 seconds early, so that's why you may notice that he selects the perfect moment to press every time. You may also notice that he directly carries the ball out and begins a counter attack to take the full advantage of his pressing. Also, as we said earlier that he was marking Neymar, whenever he applied the high pressure, he asked someone else to mark Neymar before moving forward. And as you can see, he is still blocking the passing lane to Neymar while applying the high pressure. So that was it guys, I hope you have enjoyed the analysis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.